All right, hey everybody. So I'm pretty excited about this. I've got a couple of small packages that I received today. I'm in a little conference room at work, so I'm gonna keep the volume as low as I can so I don't disturb anybody. But I've got a couple of really cool things that just arrived and I think um, other folks might get a kick out of this. So the first one is something that I found via a uh, Twitter account. This is a package that I received, um, it came from Italy, so it's kind of cool to get something from far away. And uh, I think I know what's in here because I haven't ordered a whole lot of stuff from Italy lately. But I'm going to tear this open and see if my hunch is right. Hope I didn't mangle anything inside. And we've got some important paperwork, which I'll definitely be reading over later on. But also, drum roll please. Little foil uh, anti static package contained within this is ah, there's stuff on there. There we go. There we go. Oh, that is super cool. So, this is a Wi Fi modem. So, on this end, we've got an old school connection that um, it's a 25 pin serial port, if I remember correctly, and it's got some custom circuitry. It's got a, uh, looks like a micro or mini USB port right here. And uh, some type of very clever, very small um, Wi-Fi circuit right there. And so the idea with this is you can effectively use it as a dial-up modem for any old computer that would expect to speak to a haze compatible uh, external modem on a serial port and it will interpret the requests and effectively feed, uh, feed those requests over the internet using whatever Wi-Fi network you connect this to. And because it's effectively just a, um, a Hayes modem, it's pretty standard modem type as far as the computer is concerned, it should be usable with a pretty staggeringly broad range of uh, classic computing devices. So I've got a storage locker crammed to the gills with Apple II era stuff and Commodore stuff and Amiga stuff and um, K-Pro and a couple of Osbournes and on and on and on. And none of them have had any network or dial-up capabilities that I could actually take advantage of for 20 years, give or take. So this is really cool. I'm excited to play with this. Um, it's actually got a little descriptive text on here. So thank you very much, uh, Bruno Grandpa, for designing this in Italy and sending it to me. And uh, I'm super excited to check this out and play with it. So I'm going to set this aside for now. Um, I guess I should say I could put this in the notes for the video, but if this is something that you would find interesting, and frankly, that's probably the case if you've been bothering to watch this video, you can find more info about this at uh, museo-computer.it. And I doubt that will come across too easily in video form. So I'll put the link to that in the notes. So anybody else who wants to experiment with this should be able to get one. It was priced very reasonably, especially given that it's a custom piece of hardware. It wasn't uh, super expensive. So even for a casual hobbyist, I think this could be really handy. If you want to get your vintage computing gear talking to the modern internet, uh, this is a really cool gadget. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And here in this super uh, handy repurposed Amazon box is another device which coincidentally I also bought from somebody I've met on Twitter and using the handy dandy Swiss Army knife to pop the tape on this and uh, I'm pretty excited. This is a device that I remember reading about a long, long time ago. It's something I really wanted to play with when I was a kid and never got an opportunity to and now if the gods of shipping are kind, I should have one in here. I'm going to move this out of the way. I've got a note. I haven't read this. Let's see here. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> this note for the device that I'm about to show you has a PS. This was typed on a manual typewriter that was made in 1938. One of my other crazy hobbies by the person who uh, sold me this device. So that is super cool. Thank you. I'm going to not broadcast your name and home address here, so keep that private. But uh, here we go. We've got a ton of bubble wrap. I'm hoping I can undo this without being uh, painfully noisy on the video. But I'm going to stop talking for a minute so that I can damp down the audio when it's time to actually share this with you.
All right, drum roll, please. I think I made that joke already, but I'm pretty excited. There you have it, folks. It is the Hewlett Packard 200 LX. It's a tiny palm top computer. It's made by HP. It's a self contained unit. This is uh, one of the enhanced versions that has two megabytes of RAM built in. And given how tiny it is, this thing is smaller than an, even an old uh, laptop battery would have been. This is a complete IBM PC or DOS compatible computer. I've never held one of these or used one before, so I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm um, just looking at the uh, device here. We've got what appears to be some kind of a button cell battery on the side here. And I think an infrared transmitter. Some kind of connectivity port and what looks to be an AC socket. On the other side, it looks like there's some kind of a PC MCIA type card slot with, the, with a memory card in there. This looks like it's probably a battery uh, socket on the back. I don't want to break this thing with the battery port. Hopefully it will open. I can see if there's batteries in here right now. I don't know if it would have been shipped with batteries. It's interesting. You can even see that at some point along the way this device, uh, somebody had the same kind of trouble that I'm having opening this battery port because the plastic's actually been chewed on a little bit, probably by a pocket knife like this. So I'm just going to very gently see if I can do that. There we go. And yeah, there's a couple of AA batteries in here. So this is literally an IBM compatible computer that will run on two AA's. That's pretty neat. And uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Got a little release for the screen here. I'm going to be very gentle because I understand the hinges on these tend to be... Uh... Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not the greatest sound that you want to hear your new computer make when you open it. But it does seem to have opened. And uh, here you have it. It's not only a full-featured computer, but it has an entire QWERTY-style keyboard and a number pad. But each key is like the size of a calculator key. They're tiny. So I'm going to pause the video and reorient the camera for a moment so that uh, you guys can see what I'm seeing when I try turning this thing on. I have no idea if the batteries have any juice. They may have been uh, dead for years. We'll find out here. So bear with me a moment. All right, we're back again. I've uh, reoriented my camera. And here we are. We're looking at the Hewlett Packard 200 LX Palm Top PC featuring two megabytes of RAM. Count them all. Um, this has an interesting sticker. To start Wave Viewer, see label on back. And you may have noticed when I was showing it off earlier, there is actually a sticker back here talking about how to start the Agilent Wave Viewer. I don't know anything about Wave Viewer, but it says uh, uh, United States law restricts the Agilent Wave Viewer application to sale, buy, or on the order of a physician. And that's consistent with what the person I bought this from told me, that this had previously been used as uh, a device for data entry in some kind of a medical context, a hospital or uh, maybe a medical laboratory. So pretty interesting to have it now. And looking at the keyboard here, there is actually an on-off button up here in the corner. So I'm going to give that a hit and see if anything happens. On. Oh, look at this. It came right up again. Man, this is super cool. So it says, no new or do items today. I'm going to risk the screen by tilting it back a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. I don't know if my camera is picking this up very well, but in person, the screen is pretty crisp. It's pretty easy to read. I'm going to hit OK. And it looks like we found ourselves in some kind of a appointment book application. I don't really know what this is. I'm assuming it's something built into the ROM of the device. If I hit Escape. Oh, it has a little beeper. That's cool. Um, Zoom? Nope. Yeah, I really don't know how to use this thing. So I'm going to spend some time learning how to play with this. And uh, more than anything, I'd like to just get to a DOS prompt. There's a help button. That's cool. Huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
look at this. This is super cool. The person I bought it from left me a very kind message, which I may actually cut out of the video, but uh, I guess I'll send them a message first and see if they um, have any concerns about being included in here. But nevertheless, this is really, really cool. So there you have it. It's a tiny handheld IBM compatible DOS computer running on two double A's. So that's the Hewlett Packard 200 LX. And that is also the super awesome serial port Wi-Fi modem. I didn't order these intentionally to arrive at the same time. And I didn't even know this existed for sale when I ordered the Wi-Fi modem. But uh, it's certainly possible that with the right adapters, I might be able to combine them and get this little handheld PC from who knows what year back online using this thing via modern Wi-Fi, which would be really cool. So that's it. I hope everybody enjoyed this, and uh, thanks.